Hi, this is John Brock with Brockworks. I'm back with another video to continue in this series that we're doing about creating uh, site models. And in this case, in the last video, we created the foundation uh, that we're going to put into this existing site. First video, we did the existing site model. Okay, now what we want to do is excavate uh, this site because this lot is uh, very tight. There's existing homes on both sides. Uh, there is a house to the uh, to the left, a house to the right. You can see if I kind of drag along this timeline, and then the lake down here. And when we excavate this, there's the only place to stockpile dirt is up front here, which is um, you know very tight, and that's our access to get in. So I like to build excavated site models and then compare the volume, as you can see here. If I was to click on this and into the info, it's reporting a volume. Okay, it doesn't really matter what that number is, as long as you are comparing it and that you're only disturbing the surface mesh. You're not changing the other, otherwise the volume of this. So, but we're gonna get into that. All right, so I did have some people asking me, and I'm gonna cut the site off for a second, why I spend so much time on these foundations or why in so much detail uh, to do these foundations. And really as a builder, as I'm modeling these, I'm getting my estimate. I'm estimating this job right now. And so if I selected all that and I go into Estimator, which is again our extension, Estimator for SketchUp, and we run a quick report on this, there's all of my costs associated with that foundation. And if you saw in the last video, it only took a few minutes to create that foundation. So uh, it was time well spent and it yielded my uh, budget for my concrete, my labor, my termite treatment, my gravel. Uh, essentially everything that's a part of that foundation gets estimated so all right so that's the foundation so let's get into the meat of it here I'm going to cut the site back on and uh, the most important first step I'm going to cut the contours off and I'm going to cut the site 2d off where I've just got this site model this is the model existing site the very first step is to make a copy control C I'm going to click off of there and then I'm going to alt V which is my paste in place. So you want to edit paste in place. Now it's highlighted as the a copy of it. You can see there's two in the group, but I'm going to simply drop down and change it to model excavated. Okay. So now I have two of the exact pieces of geometry. One is if I cut off the existing and cut on the excavated, it's the exact same piece of geometry um, that we're going to then manipulate uh, for a different model that we can then compare the volumes. All right, so the uh, first thing that you do when you're actually doing this for real, when you're building this house, is you need to put in offset stakes uh, around the perimeter that you're gonna excavate. Um, I typically take a Mason's rule, a stick rule, uh, that's a six foot rule, and I bend it towards 90 degrees, and I got three feet both ways and I kind of lay it out and I put my stakes as if it's a three foot offset all the way around the perimeter. And then I put my stakes in um, and take out the house stakes and the guys know where to dig between. A lot of times I'll come in and put uh, a ribbon around the limits of the excavation so they can clearly see it so they're not guessing which two stakes to go in between. So to do that, uh, to simulate that, I'm gonna just kind of draw a line uh, on top of the foundation wall um, that I'm going to then offset. So I'm, I'm drawing a polyline that I'm going to essentially use as my guide. Okay, and this basement or garage has a garage under it. So I have to excavate that entire amount as well. All right, so now I've got that. I'm going to triple click on that to select all those edges in that polyline. And then I'm going to use F for offset and click on it and go outward 36 inches, which is three feet. All right, so you can see here this is getting a little bit uh, cut up for the excavator to hit all these exact points. You know, I would probably come and get going in this uh, same, let's get rid of this corner. Like I could delete that. That's getting a little bit picky. We'd ask the excavator to do it that tight. Um, even in here, it's getting a little bit crazy, but we're going to go, we're going to go with that. All right. And then 
this retaining wall that the architect put in there, I think we need to continue the foundation wall and let that wall become a retaining wall. So I'm going to, for now, I'm going to extend that line of excavation down, uh, down a good ways here. If I can get it going in the, the proper axis. Let's go out to there. So I'm going to select all these edges in this polyline and I'm going to go to sandbox tools it comes with SketchUp free and I'm going to use this drape command which is this icon here and I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click on the site and what that's going to do is drop the, that polyline down to the surface of the site uh, model and actually cut that along the way we can see it's it's on the surface now I'm going to get rid of uh, this initial polyline just because a little cluttered and now you can see that if I was to uh, view hidden geometry you can see that it actually cut it just like we want it to do all right so that's the upper limits of our excavation but we've got the bottom uh, of our excavation of the, the bottom of the area that we're going to be cutting out that we needed to find so what I'm going to do is I'm going down up underneath here let me cut the side off for a second I've got a four inch concrete slab that sits on top of a four inch con uh, gravel sub base. Okay. So that is the dirt level. That's what I need to dig down to for my excavation. So just to get a sense of where that plays out, I'm going to actually just kind of put up, I'm going to put a rectangle on the bottom here. That's on that surface. I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to cut, pull it on out of ways and I'm going to cut the side on and this is telling me the limits of uh, this is being helpful here to tell me where I need to be intersecting with that over into there okay I'll just kind of push this one back right to it all right so what I'm going to do is um, I want to get this line here where it intersects it so I'm going to select this face and this here and I'm going to say um, right click and intersect faces with selection. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me this edge that I need in here. See, let me, let me make this a group real quick and edit it, hide rest the model. You see, this is the only edge I really needed. I'm going to just delete all this other garbage because I don't need it. All I want is that um, those lines there. So let me kill that and i'm going to essentially just triple click on that and control x and we'll edit that and alt v which is my paste in place and you see now it's given me somewhat uh the limits that i'm looking for so if i view hidden geometry i can come in here and delete this extra bit here that i don't need right and same for over here i've got these extra edges that I'm just going to erase and this is pretty much giving me my limits of excavation that I want to um, erase so I'm just going to start erasing it just like I was cutting it out with a bulldozer except it's a lot easier on this computer and I'm just kind of deleting these edges you notice it too if you look down below me it's it's plopped it all the way down to the bottom surface of our site model it's not hurting anything um, but we're going to delete it just because it's annoying to look at and we don't need it. So I'm just going to get the perimeter first. Okay, we'll kind of come along this bottom edge here. I'm just holding down the shift. I mean, uh, excuse me, holding down my left mouse button, not the ship. Holding down the left mouse button erases everything that I'm dragging my cursor over. Okay, I'm going to move on up this way. And I'm going to triple click on this because it's not connected to anything anymore and just hit delete. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and erase these edges down here on the bottom that are living down there that don't need to be down there. Just, just to make it a little cleaner. It only takes a second. Looks like I missed a little 
thing there. I missed another one right there. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do now is get the side walls of my excavation in here. And I'm going to keep this, I, I got something weird going on here. You can see that line. I think I need to delete these edges up to that line. Gets a little bit funky, but let's do that. Let's get it. So we're working off of that line that was generated. That little blue spin makes me want to save my file. Sometimes SketchUp just splats and it makes me want to splat. I know this looks tedious, folks, but it's all going to be worth it when you impress your clients with how much their grading is going to be. All right, I'm going to pick a corner here and I'm going to hold down shift in the blue axis and just infer anywhere along there because that's the bottom of our excavation. All right, and I'm going to come down and do the same thing and just infer and close. And infer and close. And really, you don't have to do every one of those edges. You just have to do whatever you had that plane uh, worked out to being. So it looks a little close. There's two edges right there. Don't know which I'm getting. Let's hope that's right. So I missed something there. See, this is an odd little point right there. It's a hairline, man. Okay. Now notice as I'm just holding it down there, it's trying to help me to find a previous point. So that's pretty cool that SketchUp added that inference. Sometimes it's really freaking annoying because it wants to find things I don't want it to find. But that's another argument. All right. Come on, the blue. Come on, blue. All right, now let's keep on going here. That should maybe connect all the way to there, and it does. Look at that. Cool. All right, so now I'm going to use sort of a, a texture to make it look like dirt. All right. Just because I want it to look cool. All right, that's our excavated site. I'm going to cut off the view hidden geometry. All right, so now when I select the excavated edge or excavated site model, you can see we are reporting volume. Uh, this almost never happens. Normally you end up having to use Solid Inspector, which is a TomTom plugin, which we'll show you in another video because obviously when you do the proposed site, you run into a lot more uh, difficulties and that Solid Inspector tool works out great. But you can see I'm reporting a volume of 319,000 square cubic feet and then if I was to uh, let's cut that side off let's see once again I'm gonna just jot that number down and it was 319.123 so 319.123 all right I'm gonna cut that model off and get the existing site model on and that was 342 481 and again, that's cubic feet. So we take the 342, 481 minus the 319, 123. It's 23, 358. Divide that by 27, because there's 27 cubic feet in a cubic yard. That's 865 cubic yards of dirt 
that's extra or that we have to come out of there. We'll be doing a lot of that would be used for backfill, but 865 cubic yards is, you know, 80 some truckloads of dirt that we need to haul out of there. Um, or not all that amount, but probably a good half of that or more will waste on the site, but that's still a lot to plan. So that gives you a sense of, um, well, let's get that excavated site back on that we fought so hard for. So that's what it's going to look like after the guys are leaving, uh, after they've dug us a hole and we're ready to start putting our foundation in. All right. So the next uh, video, what we'll do is actually do the proposed site. And that's where it gets a little trickier. But anyways, I know this is tedious, but it yielded some great results. So thanks for watching.